Get ready to dive into the wacky world of the top 10 quirky estate laws in the U.S. That's right, folks, we're about to embark on a cross-country expedition, but buckle up. We're not stopping at any national landmarks or quaint roadside diners. No, we're taking a detour straight into the twilight zone of legislation where logic goes to die, and common sense is declared unconstitutionally sensible. Over the next few minutes, we'll be unpacking the weird, the wacky, and the downright inexplicable laws that somehow still grace the law books of this great nation. From bizarre bans on Sunday sweets to regulations that seem ripped from the pages of a Monty Python sketch, we'll uncover the stories behind these head-scratching statutes. So, grab your gavel and your sense of disbelief as we explore the strange and hilarious world of America's quirkiest state laws. Because honestly, in this day and age, sometimes you just gotta laugh. First up, let's take a trip to the Keystone State, where apparently the pursuit of happiness does not include belting out your favorite show tunes while lathering up. That's right, folks, in Pennsylvania, singing in the shower is, or at least was at one point, illegal. Now you might be thinking, Mitchell, Randy, surely you're taking this whole quirky laws thing a bit too far, but I swear on William Penn's ridiculously large hat, this is a real thing. Apparently back in the 1950s, some killjoy lawmakers decided that the sound of off-key renditions of singing in the rain emanating from bathrooms across the state constituted a form of water waste. I mean, I guess if you're belting out a power ballad long enough to make Mariah Carey blush, you might be racking up a hefty water bill. But come on, is nothing sacred? This is America, the land of the free and the home of, well, at least we used to be the home of the brave. But apparently facing down a tyrannical government is one thing, but the thought of your neighbor enjoying a slightly too enthusiastic rendition of Bohemian Rhapsody while getting clean? Unthinkable. So, if you find yourself in the great state of Pennsylvania and feel the urge to channel your inner Pavarotti while showering, maybe just hum a little tune instead. You know, for the sake of water conservation, and to avoid getting a citation for being too musically inclined. Next, we're heading over to the Buckeye State, where apparently the only thing colder than a Cleveland winter is the state's stance on Sunday ice cream consumption. Yes, friends, in Ohio, indulging in a scoop or two of your favorite frozen treat on the Sabbath was once strictly verboten. Now you might be thinking, what kind of unholy law prohibits the enjoyment of a perfectly good scoop of mint chocolate chip on a Sunday? Well, apparently this law which dates back to the 1800s, was influenced by religious beliefs that prohibited such frivolous activities on the Lord's Day. I mean, I'm not a theologian, but I'm pretty sure Jesus wouldn't begrudge anyone a little frozen dairy delight, especially if it was, say, pistachio-flavored. But hey, who am I to question the wisdom of lawmakers from a time when indoor plumbing was considered cutting-edge technology? Thankfully, this archaic law has since melted away like a scoop of rocky road left out in the sun. But still... The fact that it ever existed is enough to make you wonder what other strange and wonderful laws are lurking in the dusty annals of American legal history. From the land of no Sunday Sundays, we travel northwest to North Dakota, a state where the wind blows cold and the social etiquette is even colder. You see, in North Dakota, it's considered deeply disrespectful to wear a hat indoors. Now, before you dismiss this as just another one of those antiquated social norms, like saying bless you when someone sneezes or pretending to enjoy fruitcake during the holidays, this isn't just some dusty old tradition. It's the law. Okay, well, maybe not the law with actual legal ramifications and such. More like a strongly worded suggestion from the state legislature, etched into the fabric of society. This unspoken rule, with its roots in the early 1900s, stems from a time when a gentleman never left the house without a hat, and removing it indoors was a sign of respect. Think of it like a more sartorially restrictive version of saying please and thank you. So if you find yourself in North Dakota, remember to doff your cap before stepping inside. Unless, of course, you're wearing a cheesehead hat because you're a diehard Green Bay Packers fan. In that case, you do you. Next, we're venturing into the Pacific Northwest, to the land of craft breweries, indie bands, and apparently a deep-seated fear of backward walking Tuesdays. Yes, friends, in Oregon, legend has it that walking backwards on Tuesdays brings bad luck. Now, you might be thinking, Mitchell, Randy, are you sure you haven't accidentally wandered onto the set of a low-budget horror movie? But I assure you, this is a real law, or at least it was a real law, allegedly back in the 1930s. The origins of this peculiar law are shrouded in mystery, but some speculate that it was enacted to prevent traffic collisions caused by pedestrians with a penchant for reverse ambulation. Others believe it was simply a way for the government to exert control over its citizens' every move, even the most nonsensical ones. Whatever the reason, the law seems to have vanished into thin air, much like the common sense of the people who allegedly passed it. But still, the next time you find yourself in Oregon on a Tuesday, maybe just stick to walking forwards. You know, just to be safe. From the rainy streets of Portland, we travel east to the mountain state, where the hills are alive. With the sound of silence. Because in West Virginia, whistling in public is strictly prohibited. Apparently, back in the Roaring Twenties, 
Some lawmakers decided that the dulcet tones of a well-placed whistle were just too disruptive to the peace and quiet of their beloved state. I mean, can you imagine the chaos? The unbridled anarchy of someone walking down the street whistling a jaunty tune? It's enough to make your hair stand on end. Now I know what you're thinking. But Mitchell, Randy, what if I'm whistling a patriotic tune like the Star Spangled Banner or Yankee Doodle Dandy? Surely those are exempt from this draconian law. Well, my friend, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but according to my extensive research, which mostly involved Googling weird West Virginia laws and then getting distracted by pictures of cute kittens, even patriotic whistling is a no-go in the mountain state. So if you find yourself in West Virginia and feel the urge to whistle, maybe just hum a little tune under your breath. Or better yet, just keep your mouth shut and enjoy the scenery. Hold on to your hats, folks, because we're about to delve into the strange and wonderful world of pickle regulations. Yes, you heard that right. In Connecticut, the Constitution state, pickles need to pass a bounce test to be legally sold. You see, back in 1948, some enterprising pickle producers were apparently passing off some pretty subpar pickles as the real deal. These imposters were often mushy, discolored, and frankly, just not up to snuff. So the good people of Connecticut, in their infinite wisdom, decided to take matters into their own hands. They passed a law, a real actual law, that mandated all pickles sold in the state must be able to bounce when dropped from a certain height. Now, I'm not sure what kind of sadist came up with this test, or what kind of pickle-based trauma they endured in their life, but it's a real thing. So if you're ever in Connecticut and you're craving a pickle, make sure you ask the shopkeeper to bounce one for you first. You know, just to be sure you're getting your money's worth. From the pickle factories of Connecticut, we travel west to the Mount Rushmore state where the cheese is plentiful and the sleeping arrangements are, well, let's just say they're a bit more restrictive. You see, in South Dakota, it's illegal to sleep in a cheese factory. Now, I know what you're thinking, Mitchell, Randy, why in the world would anyone want to sleep in a cheese factory? And to that, I say, have you ever smelled a good ripe cheddar? It's intoxicating. But apparently the good people of South Dakota were concerned that all that cheesy goodness might prove too tempting for weary travelers and they might be tempted to curl up for a nap amongst the Gouda and the Monterey Jack. So, they passed a law, a real live law, that made it illegal to catch some Zs in a cheese factory. Now, I'm not sure how strictly this law is enforced, or what the penalty is for violating it. Maybe they make you eat a whole wheel of Limburger cheese, but it's on the books, folks. So, if you're ever driving through South Dakota and you're feeling a little sleepy, maybe just pull over at a rest stop. Unless, of course, you're driving a truckload of cheddar. In that case, you might be out of luck. Ooh. Hold on to your horses, folks, because we're galloping into the bluegrass state where the bourbon flows freely and the ducks, well, they're not allowed to be blue. Yes, you heard that right. In Kentucky, it's illegal to dye a duck blue and then try to sell it unless you're selling more than six of them at once. Now, I know what you're thinking, Mitchell, Randy. Are you sure you haven't stumbled into some sort of fever dream brought on by too much Kentucky bourbon? But I assure you, this is a real law passed back in the 1940s. Apparently, some unscrupulous duck sellers were trying to pass off their ordinary yellow-billed ducks as something more exotic by giving them a little blue makeover. And the good people of Kentucky, being the discerning connoisseurs of poultry that they are, weren't having it. So they passed a law, a real actual law, that made it illegal to dye a duck blue and then try to sell it to an unsuspecting customer. Now, I'm not sure how they enforce this law or what the penalty is for violating it. Maybe they make you dye all your ducks pink. But it's on the books, folks, so if you're ever in Kentucky and you're thinking about buying a duck, make sure you check its feathers carefully. If it's blue, you might want to ask some questions, unless, of course, they have more than six blue ducks. Then, by all means, buy away. From the bluegrass of Kentucky, we're heading west to the Golden State, where the beaches are sunny, the people are beautiful, and the laws, well, let's just say they're interesting. You see, in California, it's illegal to ride a horse while wearing a bathing suit. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mitchell. Randy. Are you sure you haven't accidentally wandered onto the set of a Baywatch reboot gone horribly wrong? But I assure you, this is a real law, passed back in the 1920s. Apparently, some free-spirited Californians were a little too fond of riding their horses along the beach in their skivvies. And the good people of California, being the bastion of public decency that they are, decided to put a stop to it. So, they passed a law, a real, actual law, that made it illegal to ride a horse while wearing a bathing suit. Now, I'm not sure how strictly this law is enforced or what the penalty is for violating it. Maybe they make you wear a wetsuit while riding your horse. But it's on the books, folks. So if you're ever in California and you're feeling the urge to go for a horseback ride on the beach, make sure you put on some clothes first. Unless, of course, you're feeling lucky. In that case, go for it. Just don't come crying to me when you get a ticket. And finally, we come to the Green Mountain State, where the maple syrup flows freely and the laws are, well, let's just say they're a little hard to swallow. 
You see, in Vermont, it's illegal to whistle underwater. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mitchell, Randy, are you sure you haven't been hitting the Ben and Jerry's a little too hard? And to that, I say, maybe. But I assure you, this is a real law. Or at least, it's rumored to be a real law. The origins of this peculiar law are shrouded in mystery, but some speculate that it was enacted to prevent scuba divers from startling the local fish population with their off-key renditions of Yellow Submarine. Others believe it was simply a way for the government to exert control over its citizens' every breath, even those taken underwater. Whatever the reason, the law, if it ever actually existed, seems to have vanished into thin air, much like the common sense of the people who allegedly passed it. But still, the next time you find yourself in Vermont, maybe just stick to humming underwater, you know, just to be safe. And there you have it, folks. The top 10 quirkiest state laws in the U.S. From singing in the shower to whistling underwater, these laws are a testament to the fact that truth is often stranger than fiction. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a comment below, click the thumbs up button, and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon to get notified of our latest uploads. Share this video to inspire others and explore more content for useful tips and creative ideas. See you in the next video.